Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to discuss the Beehive Cluster, also known as Messier 44. It's located in the constellation known as Cancer the Crab, and it really has a rich history surrounding it. So as you take a look at this photo, what stands out to you? For me, my eye is immediately drawn to this beautiful star cluster right here, and that's what we're going to examine today. It's often nicknamed the Beehive Cluster, but it's also designated as Messier Object 44. And when I'm trying to find Cancer, this is the, the one thing in this constellation that really stands out to me. Cancer itself is a fairly dim constellation. Most of the stars are only of fourth magnitude, so you really need some dark skies away from light pollution in order to see it. I do have a whole video with how to find cancer, so be sure to go check out that video to get lots of practice with identifying cancer. But we're going to focus on Messier 44. This is the Beehive Star Cluster, and I very distinctly remember the first time I saw this. I was wondering what it was. It was kind of like a little fuzzy patch in the sky that I was able to see between two constellations, between Gemini and Leo. So I was using my star charts trying to figure out what is that thing right there? And I, th at the time I was looking at it, I was using a pair of binoculars and I was able to identify it. And with my star chart, I figured out this is Messier Object 44. So the best ways to find Messier 44, located right here, is to use Gemini. So Gemini has two bright stars in the head of this constellation, or the heads, I should say. They represent the heads of the twins. We have Pollux and Gaster. And then you can also use Canis Minor. At least that's one way. Sometimes I use the constellation of Leo to help me find this constellation as well. But it's the star pattern. The star pattern doesn't really stand and out to me, it is the star cluster. So if we take a look at the star map right here, here you have Cancer, Messier 44 is like right in the middle of this rectangular boundary. There is another star cluster here known as Messier 67. This is also an open star cluster, but it's not as bright as the Beehive cluster. So let's see if we can take a closer look. Messier 44, as I said, is the beehive cluster, and it's classified as an open star cluster. So what does that even mean? Well, I do have a whole video on that subject, so be sure to check it out in the link listed below. But open star clusters are defined by the stars being usually young of age, but also they don't have a definitive shape. Okay, they're also mostly young blue stars. This particular cluster is estimated to be 515 light years away. It contains about 50 stars, the brightest which are about six magnitudes. So it is possible to see this with the unaided eye, but if you have any form of magnification, whether it be a set of binoculars or a telescope, I encourage you to look at this constellation. It is really, really beautiful to see, and it has a variety of names. So far, I've used these two names, but it has also been called Precipi, which is Latin for manger, and it's also been called the Gate of Men. So where did this name come from, the Gate of Men? Um, some ancients thought that when they were looking at this particular star cluster, they were looking at a thin spot in the floor of heaven, and they they called it the gate of men. It was said that through this hole, souls descended to the earth to be born. So that's, that's a really beautiful picture that I have in my mind as I think about this particular star cluster. Now, I know this video is focusing in on Messier 44, but I do want to talk a little bit about Messier 67. And this is another star cluster. This one's a little bit further away, which would make sense why it's a little bit dimmer. And it's estimated to be two to be 2,700 light years away. So it's kind of next to this, I, I like to think of it as the foot of the crab, but this is actually supposed to be maybe one of the claws of the crab. So, you know, every, 
all of us have our own perceptions of what the constellations look like. But this is about the size of the full moon, so about 0.5 square degrees. It has about 200 stars and the brightest which are of 10th magnitude. So you would need magnification in order to see this constellation. And going back to our beehive cluster, I wanted to share with you a little piece of history that I found out while learning about it. Um, so Precipi, um, which is another name for the beehive cluster played an important role in the history of astronomy. Galileo was the first to turn his telescope to this fuzzy patch in the sky, and he was delighted to discover that it was a, a star cluster. So the discovery of this star cluster, along with so many other observations made by Galileo, really became the catalyst to the scientific re revolution. So the ideas about the universe that were laid out by Aristotle so many years ago began to shift and changed once Galileo changed the old beliefs with his new observations. So every time you look up in the sky and see this star cluster, you can understand and know its rich history that Galileo looked at this at this particular part of the sky, and it started to change the way we thought about the universe as we knew it at that time. Before I wrap up this video about Messier 44, there's a technique I'd like to share with you called averted vision. And this is when instead of looking directly at an object, what you want to do is look to the side of an object to have it be a little more clear as you're looking at it. And averted vision is a technique that you can use to view these faint objects. And what you're doing is you're using your peripheral vision. You look to the side of the object instead of directly at it. And if we break down the anatomy of a human eye, in this region, this is where we have lots of cone cells. And your cone cells are color detecting cells. But on the sides of your eye, here and here, there's a higher concentration of of rod cells and rod cells are light detecting cells so even Aristotle himself has documented that he used this technique to look at celestial objects in the sky so as you're looking at these fuzzy little patches in the sky instead of directly looking at it look to the side of it and the object may come across with a little bit more clarity than as if you're looking directly at it so try using this technique when you're looking at any type of celestial objects, not just this one. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the beehive cluster, also called the Gate of Men or Precipice, Messier 44. It really is just a beautiful object to see. And it's, it's the object I look for when I'm trying to identify Cancer the Crab constellation. So remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to identify the constellations and objects that are within those star patterns. So I wish you clear skies and keep looking up. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail, be sure to visit my website. I've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience. So be sure to check them out.